Our first guest today is a photographer, and his name is Michael J. Costa. Hi, Carol. Welcome, Michael. Hi, Carol. <laughs> so good to have you here. Glad to be here. Thanks for um, for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we don't have a lot of photography coming. We get art and, and books and things, so this is really nice to have a photographer. Well, thank you. I, I think the field sometimes is dominated by painters or different types of media, um, but I think photography is a field that's been around for years, <laughs> and it's nice how it's evolved, so I'm glad I can represent photography here today. That's wonderful. But you know what? I get really curious about when I see people in a certain uh, art, I have a wonder, wondering why they got into that art or when did they first have a, a glimpse of liking. Uh, well, you know, I was thinking about that on the way here. You know, I just drove from Oakhurst and it was just a beautiful ride on 41, all that wonderful rain and, you know, the remnants of it. Um, I actually first um, looked at my first National Geographic when I was probably about five or seven years old. <laughs> uh, my dad took me to, a, you know, an aunt's house and we were sitting there and what does a five or seven year old do? Uh, <laughs> look through National Geographic. And that was my first exposure, I believe, you know. Wow. And from there I always had this fascination of film and, you know, of movies and sets and pictures and just kept looking. And I think later on, not till I was in my late 30s, I went back to school. Oh. You know, um, after, you know, working in National Park, uh -huh. trying to find myself in my own career. And just as anybody who's a national, in the National Yosemite National Park, you know, they see Ansel Adams' work. They be oh. start becoming inspired by that environment oh, yes. and that wonderful landscapes. Um, but, you know, I started venturing back into school and seeing what would I would want to do for the rest of my life. And <laughs> I thought, well, you know, let's try photography. You know, wow. so I started going back to the community college, a uh, local community college at College of Sequoias, took a black and white course, wow. wanted to see if I could investigate this a little bit more and see uh, how interested I was. Oh. And that sparked it right there. That's and fabulous. it was actually. Yeah. And then I was kind of in a point where, you know, you have um, film turning into digital, you know, there in the you know, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And then when I started going back to school in 2006, I attended the Academy of Arts University in San Francisco. Wow. Where I lived for about four and a half years. That's fabulous. It was actually fabulous. It was a great time to live in the city. I could afford it. <laughs> um, I walked to school. You know, I lived in downtown San Francisco oh. and just really found my passion there. You know, oh. I studied fine art, studied black and white photography, had some amazing teachers who just really, um, you know, took me under their wings and poked at me and pushed me and, you know, uh, sent me in that right direction. That's right. That's fantastic. I was born in San Francisco, so I have a place in my heart for that, too. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, living in the city is good for people. I think living out in the mountains and out in the country gives you this uh, well-rounded view of you know, what's out there in the world. And that's mm -hmm. what's actually sparked some of my travels. So you'll, we'll talk about my travel photography. Oh, yeah. Why not? Tell me. You can start it now. Well, definitely. Well, so after I finished my school, uh, schooling in San Francisco, um, I started getting into more going to workshops. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite photographers, Phil Borges, um, I went with him to Vietnam in four, <gasps> four years ago. And it was great. We, uh, we were there for two and a half weeks. And that's where my portfolio began. You know, I started kind of venturing outside of the box mm -hmm. and wanting to meet other cultures and other people and seeing where my photography could take me. So that really kind of sparked it. And I just kind of moving forward from there. And then um, in 2015, um, went to Italy for oh, two and a half I weeks. Love Italy. And Italy was fabulous. We were mm -hmm. in Florence. We're close to those museums. Yes. You know, that where art really began, where people started really seeing, you know, and you know, letting their minds open up. So, yeah. you know, I am, it was it was a wonderful time. And I think, I think there was a big change there because they all of a sudden were doing, not just uh, doing stuff on walls. They were looking at people and they were painting what what they saw. Absolutely. So it really it 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 opened up a whole new world of 
It well, lead, the, it'd lead all the way up to the movies, you know. Absolutely. The Renaissance era, you know, Michelangelo, you have, mm -hmm. you know, Leonardo da Vinci. You know, they're prepping all that for us. They're, they're making those wonderful murals that, you know, yeah. that spark something inside of uh, our imaginations and for each for one sure. of us, whether you're a painter or a photographer. And then as I started traveling more, I had more opportunity. Um, this year I went to Nepal. I was in Kathmandu for two and a half <gasps> weeks um, we actually uh, trekked to the first base camp which and the highest peak I reached was Kalapathar which was 18600 oh. so again you know um, that documentary photography that photojournalistic um, inspiration you know mm -hmm. meeting people talking to people um, that's part of my journey that's you know it's interesting because I am in the fine art area I am also involved in the photojournalism but, you know, all of my experiences even led me to do wedding photography, you know, oh, within gosh. the area. And brides really like my perspective. I kind of come in with more of an editorial or a more of a photojournalistic photo point of view. Oh. So I can really tell a story. And I think that's how my photography has evolved. Yes. You know, telling a story. Yeah, but it, you're, you're a writer writing through photography. <laughs> absolutely. You're telling your stories with your... Yeah, absolutely. So it's been, a, it's been a wonderful journey. So did you bring anything in today? Well, we, I did bring some work today. Um, right now we have on the screen some of my wedding photography. Oh. And um, I believe, if I'm correct... Actually, um, no, we're looking at Nepal here. So oh. this is part of my journey. Oh. Um, this would be uh, prayer flags on our journey uh, through the Himalaya mountains. Oh my gosh, that's and beautiful. And the energy was just fantastic. So looking at a day of trekking, this is actually your first base camp. This is 16,000 elevation. Wow. You're walking through glaciers. Um, you can kind of see that scale of me versus those tents and <laughs> you know and unfortunately there is oh, and again this is Mount Everest beautiful. on your trek you're trekking for 11 days to mm -hmm. get your to your you know, your destination it takes nine days to get to um, your destination of 15,000 or 16,000 or 18,000 elevation wherever that may be and then it takes three days to kind of come to come back down Mm. Right here happens to be uh, returning from um, our trek. We're all very, very tired. I'm in Kathmandu. We're in this traffic jam, and I found <laughs> these kids, and they just posed for me. <laughs> so everyone there was very, uh, very genuine, very interested in, you know, who I was, and, you know, they want to participate. What you're seeing here are some of my travels here to Florence, the basilicas oh, in Rome. Wow. This is the Trinita. Um, and the basilicas, it is that beautiful light that you see, you know, um, that coming through those windows, yes. you know, they're very moving. Um, I'd be in the basilicas and I would cry and we're going back into my travels. So this would be <laughs> Lukla. This is Kathmandu, oh. a little boy that I had seen on the streets there. Precious. So, I mean, it's a lot of different capturing people in their element, um, you know, meeting people and you know, having the time to talk with people as well. Well, you know, in Europe, I noticed when I was over there that uh, people are more friendly with each other. You know, they, they, they said, you know, you're my friend. I, I, And now in this country, it's been a long time of me, 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 me. But I think I start seeing a little bit what I'm really pushing, talk to somebody. Say, I like what you got on. It lights up their day, you know. Absolutely. Um, when we were in Florence, um, just walking to the markets within the neighborhood and seeing people on an everyday basis, uh -huh. um, you see what or how people live and how people are normal, just like you and me. There are certain things in life that we all want. We want, all want to be healthy. We want our kids to have a good education. Um, you know, we want to live in a planet that benefits everybody yeah. and that equality. Yes. And once you start going outside of your boundaries, and your boundaries might be just, you know, going to another city or to another town. Yeah. It doesn't have to be going to another country. It's talking to people, sitting down with people, and appreciating who they are. And that's when you, get, you find the stories. 
and you kind of get into their space and then you take that picture because you had that five minutes with them and sometimes it's a minute sometimes it's 20 minutes yeah you never know you That's never know what it's going to be like you reach out or you let people watch out reach out to you because lots of times that's important too absolutely so what do we have any more of your oh work let's to show? look through some of my uh through some of the frozen series mm -hmm. uh there's been a few things so this was from a show um called the eight by ten portfolio show uh -huh. at stellar gallery i do have my work hanging at different galleries uh stellar gallery in oakhurst Fresno Art Hub in Fresno. And if you're ever in Oakhurst at Cool Beans Coffee Shop, I have my whole Nepal series there. Oh. But what you're seeing on the screen is my Frozen series. It's been in the works for over 10 years. Wow. And I started this in a class at the Academy of Arts with my mm. teacher, David Wasserman. And it's called Frozen because what I do is I take nature, put it in distilled water, I freeze it all together, mm -hmm. I create my own piece of work. Wow. And then I photograph it. And I'm using ambient light. So, and there is no manipulation on these photographs. Mm -hmm. So, this is actually in the beginning. Uh, what you've seen on the screen right here, this is from Nepal. This would be walking through some of the, um, the temples. And we actually weren't allowed to go in some of the temples because of the holiness. Oh, yeah. um, but we were able to walk through. And so this was a snapshot of this gentleman, this Beautiful. holy man. Yeah. And then again, this is going back to my Frozen series. Actually, this was uh, taken in 2007. This was probably one of the first five. So I always say this is my signature piece. Oh. So what I did with this one, I laid something black underneath it, like a little black mat, because I wanted those, um, the texture to come out. Uh -huh. I wanted that light to come out. Right. And all my photos are so different. They all have a different representation. And this is actually work that you can see at either Fresno Art Hub today, because it is Fresno yes, Art Hub. Yes, Art Hub. Yeah, Art, Art Hub Hop tonight. is tonight. Yeah. And we also have some of these at um, Stellar Gallery in oh, Oakhurst as well. Oh, well, that's good. Do you, do you guys don't have our art hop? Uh, we do don't you? do our art, art hop, but we do have what is called Sierra Art Trails. Oh. And it is always the first uh, weekend in October. I believe this year it is September 29th. October 30th, no, I mean September 30th and October 1st of 2017, but you can always go to sierraarttrails.com and find out more about that. Oh, that's fabulous. It's great because you have a hundred or more artists that are represented, mm. represented there. Wow. You have uh, ceramic artists, painters, yeah. um, photography, a jewelerist, I mean, everything you can imagine, and you get to see it all through the Mariposa and Madera County on mm -hmm. um, that weekend. So it's three days, actually. Okay, well, you know, uh, people might forget because it's that far away. Right. So you have to come back. Just Absolutely. Be and remind people. That, we'll talk that about Sierra Art Trails. Really oh, it's wonderful. Yes. You can meet um, one of my favorite artists. She makes her own um, paper, Ocean Jones. Wow. And she creates these amazing, um, you know, little ornaments, these little figures out of it. Um, some of my favorite um, painters are there. Jenny Burdick, um, Carolyn Hartling, um, Anita Stoll. So, and if you like photographers, there's David Hoffman. There's, oh my God, Franca Gabler. She's very prolific. And there's so many great artists. You, you, you'll, you'll get hooked immediately. That's fantastic. And then you'll want to see how, what can I create? How can I get involved? And you can actually get involved by either, you know, being involved in the tour or you could be on the board if you really want to support art. Wow, that's wonderful. So there's so many ways to, you know, get involved yeah. in the art world. Even if you're not creative, you can be a host of a a particular artist so it could be a bookstore mm -hmm. with an artist so there we go your show right there right authors there. and artists yeah, or together you, you know you really you picked a good art because you can make money being a photographer absolutely as far, as far as just a fine artist that's a lot lot harder well and that's why you know uh, with me I do different types of mediums of art I am a fine art photographer I do f weddings as well mm -hmm. um, because that helps me to travel yeah. that helps me to buy my mats or my frames so that I can show my work it all builds on top of each other 
Yes. You know, so um, I think in this day and age, you know, you really have to have a little bit more of a way of um, getting your craft out there. You have to be very, um, I'm not sure what the word is, but very crafty <laughs> with your craft. Very crafty, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay, now, if somebody wants to hire you to do some photography or a wedding, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, to get a hold of me, the best way is to go to my website, which is um, www.michaeljcosta.com. Oh, that's easy. And that's easy for you to get there. <laughs> and that way you can look at my work. Um, you can always contact me. My phone number is 559-799-9632 if you just want to talk about weddings or if you want to talk about an event that you need covered. Good. Yeah. Well, on your web, you're, you have your phone number on there, right? Yes, yeah, all my contact information they might is there. It today, but as long as it's there on your web. Well, and, that's you know we are, it's important to have a website. And you don't mind people calling and talking to. Oh you. no, not at all. I love to talk with my uh, clients, and that's why I'm involved in Sarah Art Trails, and that's why I go do hang my work work mm -hmm. at Fresno Art Hub. When you have that one on one connection yes. with an artist, and you get to meet the person that you're going to hang that piece on your wall, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's so much more of a connection. It's so much more personable. It's, it's better than going to Target or, and getting <laughs> your cookie cutter you know, piece of artwork there that everybody has. Yeah, I wish that, I just wish that people would make a little bit more of a percentage of their salary into getting something that's arty. It's something that well, it's is collecting. a beautiful thing. That something in your home, when you, when you go and you look at it, oh, that's so beautiful. It makes me feel good. I think collecting art can be very intimidating, oh, because it's you know so. it can be a little bit because you know you walk into a gallery, it's all mm -hmm. very pristine. Um, but once you start talking to that person, once you start looking, and your mind starts wandering, and you're wondering why am I attracted to that piece? Is it the colors? Is it the rhythm? Is it the pattern? Mm -hmm. Is it the connection? Um, is it because it reminds me of someone that you know may have passed away, or you know whatever that may be? Mm -hmm. um, you know that's where you make the connection. You know, and then when you put it in your, you know, your room or your living room, and you get to talk to your uh, guests who come over with pride. You're going to get hooked. You're going to start buying a lot more work really quick. Yes, right. Well, what the, another thing is the, for the quality of the art here, the, so many wonderful artists here. And what you can get for a certain amount of money here is like you, maybe you'd pay $1,000 here and you'd be $20,000 in a big gallery in New York or right. something. So it's, it's, it's a not the matter of quality. It's a matter of thinking that this is good even though it's somebody that doesn't have a big name. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look for the names, look for the quality. Well, and too, you know, you're getting the same kind of quality as a, like you said, a art piece in New York or San Francisco or Carmel. It is right here in your backyard. All right. You All right. know, so that's what's amazing. So that's why you should go out to Art Hop. And you never know. And explore. You never know what local artist is going to become a... A famous artist. Absolutely. And that means you're, you can sell their painting if you want to, or at least know that it's worth tons more money than they paid for it. <laughs> Absolutely. I always say people will drop, you know, a few hundred dollars easily on a new smartphone or the new Apple product that's out there. But, you know, um, sometimes that doesn't, that doesn't stay around for 25 years. No. Or 30 sure. years. That's for sure. So, you know, think about that a little Something bit. Something you can give down in your family, you know. Exactly. Follows through. Okay, it's been so great having you. Oh, thank you, you so much for and letting really me be part of your show. Thank you, and I thank want you. you to come back and uh, before that event. I will. I will definitely come in before Sierra Art Trails. That way, it would give you, um, you know, how to find the catalog, all everything that everything, you need to know. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you tonight. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll Fresno see you. Art Hub. Yeah, I'll see you at Fresno <laughs> Art Hub. Thank you for your time. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> 